can you see my presentation? Yes, we can see it very okay. well. Um, now, I will, with this uh, presentation, I would like to uh, to give uh, some answers to uh, to some questions concerning uh, how laboratory animals are involved in uh, food science. What are the main ethical issues and concerns which are raised uh, to see and to explain if and what is the legal framework and uh, how the situation can be uh, improved. So uh, laboratory animals um, are involved in uh, different fields of uh, food science, uh, like nutritional research, toxicological studies, food safety and quality control, and uh, development of functional uh, food. So speaking about the contribution of laboratory animals to nutritional research, uh, actually, we are using animals to study the nutritional composition of different foods and to determine their effects on growth, development, and the overall health and welfare. So the aim uh, to using animals is actually to, to check the, vi the bioavailability of nutrients, uh, absorption rates, and the impact of various diets uh, on uh, physiological uh, processes. Uh, Animals can also be used for toxicological studies to check is, if uh, food additives and, and contaminants and other substances uh, are okay for the, uh, the health of, uh, of humans. And of course, to, to provide some responses concerning uh, the physiological impact uh, these, uh, uh, these substances could have uh, in uh, human health. Speaking about the food safety and the quality control, uh, we are using uh, laboratory animals to check uh, the microbiological contamination levels and also to evaluate some sensory characteristics of food products like the taste, the texture, or, the, or even uh, the, the, the aroma. And uh, now concerning the development of functional foods, which actually the, the aim of this wonderful research team, um, uh, Dr. Kurkutas and Dr. Yanni uh, are participating, is to, to check um, how we can uh, improve the health and welfare, and welfare of humans by using this new functional food. And this is exactly the field of the research activity of uh, of this research group uh, with uh, a number of uh, different publications uh, using laboratory animals like a rabbit or, or rats. We don't have specific data about the number of animals used for food science. Uh, I will use uh, this table from uh, uh, the European Union uh, uh, database and uh, the, the number of animals used for biomedical and other research activities uh, is about 8 million. And these data are, are related to the number of animals used in the year 2020. And these are the last published uh, data from the European um, Commission. The majority of animals used, uh, or if you want the, 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 the most popular animal used in research, uh, are mice. And uh, there is also a, 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 a recently raised uh, new animal model, uh, which is zebrafish. So mice and zebrafish are the main, uh, the main animal models used uh, for research and other scientific purposes. Concerning the, 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 the aim of the use of animals, we can see from this uh, uh, table that uh, the majority of animals are used for fundamental basic research, for transnational research, but there is also a 23% a, a, a 20, uh, of animals which are used for regulatory purposes this means that we have a legal frame 
and we have to use animals in order to guarantee uh, the safety of substances which are going to be used for, uh, for, for, for humans. Of course, this is the one option, uh, if you want, of, for, uh, of the use of laboratory animals, uh, which is a, a scientific process, a scientific procedures, um, uh, where we had, uh, which is considered very uh, controversial. And this is not uh, a recent uh, issue. There is a debate starting from the 16 or the 17 uh, uh, some uh, two or three hundred years before, and as a result, uh, we can use uh, what Descartes said that the animals, as they cannot speak and they cannot reasoning their thoughts, this means that uh, they don't feel any pain. Uh, after one hundred years, almost from Descartes. Jeremy Betham uh, said that, okay, the issue is not if the animals can speak or can think or can express by words their feeling, but the problem is, the question is, do they feel pain? And yes, the animals can feel pain. This debate, uh, as I told you, started uh, some, some uh, uh, two or three hundred years before, is still existing. And we have this um, European Day for uh, Humane Science. And there is an effort from the scientists, but also from, from the public, to replace uh, the use of animals with uh, uh, other, without, uh, with other, uh, uh, with other, some other means. And we will see what these uh, different issues could be. Except the ethical issues which, issues which are related to the use of animals and if you want to the animal welfare, there are also other ethical issues which are related concerning uh, are related to the scientific significance of these uh, of these use. So we have a lot of publication saying that comparing to clinical studies, the preclinical studies are suffer from the part of their uh, methodology. These are not well designed scientists. Um, another issue, ethical issue, is related to the significance of the trans the the, the trans translational of this kind of uh, of studies. For example. We are using uh, mainly young animals, 10 to 12 years old. We are using animals which actually are products of, uh, of, of homogeneity. Uh, you are, we are using uh, to, to breed uh, uh, brothers with sisters or uh, children with, uh, with parents because we want to, 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 to keep uh, the homogeneity concerning the genotyping of these, the genotype of these animals. We are using mainly male animals instead of females, and males and females. Uh, don't forget that the drug we are producing or the functional foods we are producing or we are trying to produce are for also for, for both male and females. So what kind of results can translate to human if we have only results on male animals? And there are also some other um, uh, discussion about uh, the fact that uh, we are delaying the treatment of animals. Um, for example, in a carcinogenicity study, we are using to, to have, we are preferring to have the cancer, the cancer well established uh, in the body before proceed with the treatment. S this is uh, this is not the same with humans, uh, where from the same the the very first symptoms we have, we start the treatment, um, at least the symptomatic treatment. Another issue, ethical issue, which is related also with uh, 
the science and the, the science which is produced by uh, using animal in research and in food science also is the reproducibility and the replicability of the animal studies. This is a great and very important issue nowadays. And why that? Because we are trying to reproduce uh, some, uh, some preclinical studies by using um, more or less the same setup, but we are not driving to the same results. And this is something which is uh, used mainly in preclinical studies. We are saying, for example, that uh, aspirin uh, is good for the cardiovascular system, but we don't have the uh, same uh, results from different studies. Recently, uh, about two years before, uh, we published an editorial in the Nocrology and Metabolism, Metabolism raising exactly the same issue. Uh, we got, we are using a lot of diabetic uh, rats in our studies. And so we had the, the opportunity to, to study this model, how to produce diabetic ra uh, rats using the streptozotokin uh, protocol, which is, a, which is a very good, a very well established protocol. But in rats, mainly in rats, there is a, a great diversity between the doses we are using, uh, the, the streptostokin doses we, we are using to obtain the results, a, a varying from uh, 35 milligrams per kilo up to uh, 70 uh, milligrams per kilo. And this problem is raised, why? Because the methodology, the material and methods which are, uh, are written in the published papers do not say the truth concerning the animal losses, for example, from this uh, protocol. So this problem was raised exactly uh, with this editorial in endocrinology and metabolism. In 1979, these two persons, Russell and Barr, published a, 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 a book on humane techniques, uh, experimental techniques. techniques. And then they, they first introduced the three R's principle. The three R's principle is uh, the acronym from the words replacement, which is the methods we have to have in our mind before going to animals to replace their use with some other uh, uh, with uh, uh, some other means like in vitro only silicon methods or simulators. Reduction, the second R, means to try as we can find any replacement method try to reduce the number of animals. And this is very important to, to use statistical methods to evaluate the exact number of animals which have to be used in a study, or even to, uh, to, to, to do first a systematic review and meta-analysis. And, and meta -analysis. It's very promising that F FDA very recently uh, uh, start accepting research results performed non, in, in non animals um, in non animals in order to give the green light for a drug uh, for the circulation of a new drug so they are accepting now also non animal tests and finally re a refinement the third R of, of the three R's uh, principle, which means that if we cannot, uh, we, if we have to use animals, and uh, uh, we we made our calculations and we reduce, we we achieve to reduce the number of animals used, then we have to take care in order to refine the experimental procedures and make efforts to decrease the suffer of the animals um, by different means, 
uh, like the use of anesthetics, by improving housing conditions, or by providing uh, uh, the earliest uh, veterinary care. Of course, it's very important to know where to stop uh, our, uh, our study in the mean that we have to understand when the animal welfare is not acceptable anymore because of the, 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 of the experimental procedures we are doing to the animals. In that case, we have to stop our experiment and we have to euthanize the animals. Now, to, to translate all these different opinions um, and to translate, if you want, the interest of the society, but also of, of scientists, uh, we start creating uh, a legal framework. We, has, we start creating um, legal obligations for all those uh, who are performing uh, experiments on animals. And these efforts started very early in 1876 in the uh, UK. And nowadays, the legal framework uh, um, um, regulating the use of animals is the Directive uh, 201063 is the European directive, so all the Euro, the, the member states of the European Union have to, to do their animal experiments in accordance to, do, to this um, regulation, to this legal base, which legal base um, uh, ha, uh, is trying to regulate uh, all these different issues you can see here, and actually, to, to give some um, guidelines, some obligation for all those who wish to make animal experimentation. I will not go in details, but any uh, animal, animal experimentation, experimentation has to be uh, approved by the competent authority. And the researchers should have to clearly state the objectives, the reasons for choosing uh, uh, animals, um, details about the experimental procedure and, of course, details about and justification about the number of animals which are used. What I have to say about this legislation, uh, although I don't like to, you know, to speak a lot about uh, legislation, laws, regulation, and so and so on, this specific directive is very important. Why? Because this legislation is promoting two issues. The first one is the three R's by, by triggering scientists to think about replace, reduce, or refine animals, uh, the experimental procedures. And the second one is to speak and to promote transparency and openness uh, of these procedures to the society, to the scientific society, and also to the public. And this is achieved by actually the EU database Alures, where all statistics, but also all the, the procedures which are performed in the European Union territory are open uh, in these both sides, are open to the public. And I will go to the final question and try to give some uh, a, a reply to this. We have some tools which should and probably must be used when we are designing an animal study in order to optimize uh, the, our study and also to optimize uh, our results. So there are some tools like prepare guidelines and uh, uh, this prepare guidelines is actually a checklist providing us with all the necessary information about uh, the design of an experiment. Another very important tool is EDA uh, from NC3Rs and also with this we can have a, a first-hand information on how to design a, a, to in a correct way, our experiment. There is the Animal Study Registry, a, a, a platform where we can send 
uh, the design of our experiment in order to be reviewed and approved by reviewers. And the animal registry is uh, similar to the preclinical trials. And also we have some guidelines concerning how to reporting uh, our data. Uh, these are arrived guidelines because we need to have reliable uh, results and we have to have also repeatable and reproducible results. And I will close my presentation with this uh, poster from NIH, notifying that animal welfare is going hand by hand with good science. If we have animals, laboratory animals, which are suffering, then our results will not be reliable. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kostomitsopoulos, for this uh, insightful presentation on ethical issues and concerns on the use of animal models. Uh, we have uh, a question already uh, in the Q&A section. Um, would you like to answer it now or uh, we wait uh, until the yes. end? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, might be off topic, no, no, no. but given recent focus on using insect and nutrition sources, would like his comment on whether there are the same yes. concern. Maybe we uh, should read this question so everybody understands it. Um, the question is, uh, your, what are your uh, concerns on, on the recent focus on using insects as a nutritional source? Would you like to have a comment on that? Um, unfortunately, I would not give a, a, an answer uh, as a scientist uh, to, to 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 this question, so I would prefer not to uh, not to 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 give an answer. Um, as a consumer, uh, honestly speaking, I'm not so familiar with this. But from scientific point of view, I, I don't have something to say. Uh, what about the ethical issues? Any what is your um, opinion? But... Well. Um, insects, uh, I, will, uh, I, I will give you a reply based on the legal, the, the, field, of the, uh, the field of implementation of the legislation. So in insects are not included in the field of, of the directive, at least for the moment. Uh, so it's, let's uh, say, in the, using the official legal wording is out of the field of the legislation. And uh, um, I don't think that for the moment um, um, are there any ethical issues as far as uh, I'm concerned and based on, on, on my knowledge. All right. Uh, do you think that we expect a new legislation framework from uh, EU? Um, on, you know, the use of this, insects. Um, well, this will this will depend on the uh, on the reaction of the society, because mainly when we are speaking for uh, animal welfare legislation, uh, the European Union is trying first is trying to to hear the society and then to produce. Uh, legal framework. I'm not aware if there is uh, some in this inter this interest for the moment um, concerning the use of insects uh, from the, the European Union on the European uh, Commission. I say for the moment because if, for example, we will have insects used. Uh, as a main source for nutritional uh, functional foods, then, may, then may, the situation may be changed. But as far as I know for the moment, there is no an ethical concern about this use. Okay, very clear. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you.